and you'll get then one minute, two minutes, or three minutes, the entire treatment then is administered to the person. <coughs> you take it off, test, and the body person is okay. Yes, but I would like uh, one of these to hang on uh, in something that you put on yourself. Well, you can do that with this too. Yes, you sir. can wear it. This is complete in itself. identify 
with this attachment. And where do they go with that? The great sadness is when they attach or we attach to another human being. As we go deeper, we find that we are human. We have great big holes in our being. We struggle with these holes to perfect them. Thank you. And the people then become disillusioned. They say, oh my God, he is only human. And they give up in their looking for something to attach to as a reference for themselves. I had the experience very early in life at the age of six of dying. I experienced almost total transition. I suffered from double low bar pneumonia four times in 18 months. What is that? Pneumonia. My lungs filled with fluid. I could not breathe. And I was choking to death. The fourth time, the doctors had no penicillin at that time, so there's nothing more we can do. Prepare for your son's transition. The priest came. I was given the last rites of the Roman Catholic Church. Received my first communion, extreme, uh, uh, extreme unction, all the rites, all at one time. I was totally prepared. I will never forget, I suddenly was lifted out of body, and I saw my physical body, my parents, the priest, the doctor, as if I was looking through a lens. And I started to move up into this tunnel. And as I looked back, there was that beautiful, beautiful light. I cannot use words to describe that light. It was and is in that light a total expression of love. I was attracted to it. I was drawn like a magnet to that light. And then suddenly I was back in my body and the next day I was whole. No more pneumonia running around as a kid. So from dying to living in 24 hours. My question, why am I alive? What is the reason for my not dying? I was ready, prepared, and suddenly I was pulled back into life. I went to my parents after I was able to talk to them. I said, Mommy and Daddy, why am I alive? What is the reason for my life? They couldn't give me any answer. I went to the priest. They couldn't give me any answer to the nuns, even to my own doctor. No matter who I turn to, with a human body, I received no answer. I then started to go within. <clears throat> I learned meditation at the age of six. I was drawn, like the most powerful magnet in the world, to go to church. I served the 5.30 Mass in the morning. I would get up before 5 o'clock. Walk was one, one and a half miles. And sit in church and keep that question going. 
why am I alive? I want to know why I am living. There is a purpose now to my life. I want to know. I banged away every morning for four years asking that question with nothing happening. A total blank. How many of you would have done that? What drove me was an inner conviction that if I persisted in my prayer, <clears throat> a answer would be forthcoming. Until finally, one morning, <clears throat> the door opened and a voice spoke within me. The voice said, you will be a chemist, a phosphor chemist. You will write a book on luminescence. You will then build your own corporation in this field and then do fundamental research on rare earth phosphors. It's about as explicit a set of answers as any person can get. I went home Borrowed a dollar from my grandmother, bought a five, one dollar chemistry set, and became a chemist. <laughs> I did not challenge those statements, but I started to put them into action. Within a year, I had a full-blown laboratory in my uh, bedroom, the stinks were too much <laughs> my parents because my mind ranged in a hundred and one different directions. I had no fear and so I made everything from nitroglycerin on down. I went into explosives, I went into pyrotechnics, I went into phosphorus. I was interested in light and all of its manifestations. Okay. I had many a fire. House. What? You didn't blow the house up? Well, I had fires on the roof, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> that scared my poor parents again and again. They never knew what was going to happen. I would dig a hole in the ground and boom, up would come the ground. <laughs> but within two years, I had a full-blown laboratory with wet chemical lab, microscope room, and a dark room. I got my chemicals, I got the glassware by going to Justine and Care, the chemical supply house, and going into the scrap bin, but they discarded. They gave it to me. I did service by packaging and helping them in the packaging room, and they gave me things. I learned glass blowing, and I had a full-blown laboratory. By 13, I had synthesized the chemical that is in the firefly, the light of the firefly, the bioluminescence. It was an eight-step organic synthesis. Normally, it's college work. Three amino cells, one four dione. But when you mix that with an organic oxidizing agent, that whole beaker became light. I'll never forget that thrill. When I went to school, I said there will be a marriage of chemistry and physics. It is unwise to specialize just in chemistry or physics. We will have micro-logic components, we will have equipment that will act as we have now in transistors. I saw the movement of current and the action
action in these little tiny micro logic systems. I said, I must prepare myself for this work. He said, well, we don't have any education. I said, all right, I'll educate myself. I did that. But what happened? You isolate yourself from your teacher, you isolate yourself from your fellow man, and you stand alone. But throughout my life, I have learned to go within, to pray, to contact the friends, the teachers we have within each one of us. Draw that strength and then walk without fear. And that's what I share with you. Yes, I come here as a friend. I come here to share what limited knowledge I have and know. But above all, I come here to be a catalyst to you to think, to act, and to do. From this moment on, I can help you whenever you have need. With what I'm doing in California, we can link together, bond on a friendly basis, not a competitive basis. Com competition in this area is so destructive. It has brought me in my laboratory again and again to tears, sadness. I share this knowledge with people. They grab it, oh, I've got something, and they want to run with it. And they run, and I just have to leave them go. And then they stumble and fall and come running back and say, well, what's happening? And I've had to learn to be tolerant. Because by nature, I am not. There is that type of strength that you need when you've had to work alone, that I've had to overcome to learn to work with people. But in working with people, we go from the I to the we, and that we opens the infinity of knowledge. The great teacher we have is nature. The great teacher we have of understanding ourself is our children. If you can listen to the counsel of your own child who you have brought into this world, you have nothing to fear. But how many of us as parents of very many of us have put our children down. Don't tell me what to do. I'm your parent. I know what needs to be done. And you shut up. You shut that channel. And that child withdraws. And then goes and looks then for another source that they can consult or be proud of or respect. We must, we must learn to let our children teach us. And that's exactly what Christ said when he said, little, suffer little children to come unto me. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven, which is within you and me. I had the privilege, the wonderful privilege, of meeting Pope John the Twenty-Third at Roly Poly Pontiff. I heard him in public audience. I was only a few feet from him, and his opening remarks to us was the following, I am a simple peasant. 
I loved my food and my wine. And he took his hands and tapped his great big pot belly. <laughs> very rotund, very short. And then he stopped and looked at all of us and said, I am a simple servant. I am here to serve you. And then he made the remarks which engraved themselves in me. He said, you are the church. The church is within you. And that is true. Because when you look at yourself in totality, what a wonderful gift God has given to us to have these faculties a body, mind, and spirit, which we then can cohere together this trinity of activity into one being, three in one. And when we deal with it lovingly, it all acts as one. And we can create. And we're here for that purpose. That's exactly why we are here. One reason to continue the acts of creation. We ensoul the matter with our love and our thought forms. And when we do that, matter takes on that form and becomes what we want it then to be. Look at the outpouring of the minds of the past generations. But also look at what you are doing, each one of you. The wonderful accomplishments each one of you are doing and bringing into being your talent, your capacity. Because as I look at you, I sense a faculty in you, a capacity <clears throat> that draws me to you and makes me want to help to bring this about. Your intrinsic ability to manifest your purpose here on life. And once we can do that, we bring peace on earth and goodwill then to our fellow man. <coughs> the morning discussion is a tough one. It's been the most difficult topic we have. What is our soul? What is the nature of the soul? How can we begin to understand that faculty, that power, that we call the soul? In the book that I am writing on crystal therapeutics, <coughs> the first chapter is the soul. A total reversal of anything that you would logically follow in any book so far. But let's take on the most difficult thing. What spoke in my body when I persisted for four years? It was my soul speaking to me. I wanted to know why I was here. If each one of you asks that question, it will come to you in your time and for your good. But you must persist. And in that persistence comes the strength, the coherence, and the ability then to act when it speaks. There's nothing magical, it's nothing mysterious. Because the teacher we have in life is our soul. The purpose in life is to open the activity of our 
so operating in matter, manifesting itself outwardly through the chakras. Because these are the oscillators that pro pro propagate the information codes and the patterns that move out. And as we do that, we link to one another, we link to the universe, and we become <coughs> one with the all. Now we can put the foil up. Here's a diagram.
the enosis. Now, what is the natural shape of quartz? Hexagonal. <laughs> See it here? The water molecule, when it is frozen, takes on what? A hexagonal shape. When you take a snowflake, water frozen and you get a snowflake, what is the shape of the snowflake but this? You see the beautiful symbolism tying this all together? The descent into matter it goes into water, and water is the processing system for all of these forces. It's so simple, there is so much contained in it. So what I did, I put a symbol together <coughs> expressing the totality of our being. By so doing, you can take, no matter what type of therapeutic individual you are, draw your breath in, hold this, and imbue this then with what property you want to be injected in for the need of that person. And when that is done, you put it on the body, the body is whole. Because this is in God. Can you use it as a placement? As a what? As a placement if you... It is. Yeah, it is. It is. For example, if you put um, a sapphire, it says that it, if you put a sapphire, you can see lila, violet. Right. The ray of violet. But you can take that and put it right in here, if you want, right on the top. Yeah. You put sapphire on here, draw your breath in, pulse your breath, and the sapphire is in here. Yeah, but I mean, can, can we see, for example, here I have a sapphire, can we see the, the color of lila? Violet? Well, I, like, I don't know. Because it should be the, the crown chakra. It is. The sapphire, yeah. yeah I don't think we can get it out. No. no it's not, it's too small right now. Oh, for but example, what, I, what I will do is this, and I'll show you something. Yeah. I'll clear it. I hold it this way. Yeah. Yeah. Now you feel the crystal. Just feel it between your hands. All right. Now I will take the sapphire and put it on here. See? Mm. Now I draw my breath in. I see the sapphire with my right side.
materials in the nucleus of our cell that create fields. And these fields now move out from the genetic code into the chromosomes, the nucleus, cytoplasm, tissue, the organism itself, and finally the environment. Now, each time there is a movement, there is a loop, a feedback loop. It's electronic curve. It's exactly the same as electronic systems. So it moves out links, and then it feeds back, moves out links, feeds back. And so you have these series of outwardly moving feedback loops until you come out here into the environment. This now is your auric field. It's expressive here in the aura of the entire pattern from the primary genetic code to all the interaction in your organism. Now, how can you separate that or decode it? You ask questions. The answers are forthcoming by vibration or color or shape geometry. As I go deeper, as I gain further insight, I will be giving you handbook after handbook of method of decoding this information. The work is just starting. Now we take the same thing and look at man and his body. There are seven bodies. We start with the physical body. The second is the astral or emotional body. There is then the next, the lower mental body and the higher mental body. Now, the lower mental body is the rational mind. The higher mental body is the intuitive mind. We then go to the buddhic body. The next is the atmic body and finally the monad, the I am or the self. There are seven bodies that encompass the totality of the force fields that are within us. Now we can start and give a verbalization of these bodies. And that is, I act, which is the physical body. I feel the astral body. You can see how this ties in? I think, which is the lower mental body. I know the higher mental body. I love, that is the body body. I will, the ethnic body, and finally I am. The final hotel name. I am what I am. So that's a totality of bodies. All encompassed into one. Sri Krishna, I am the self seated in the heart of all beings. A wonderfully said. I have so much here to share with you, I can only cover a bit of what I have. And what I'm going to do will be a unique experiment given by you coming to me. I will take the core of knowledge I have right here in this book. When I finish, put it into the big crystal. You will all meditate on it and will extract and I'll try to transfer it all to you by means of the crystal. <laughs> I can't do more, but I want to give you everything I possibly can. Well, that's enough. <laughs> All right, now let's look at the soul. What is our soul? The 
the main characteristic of the soul is consciousness. I think I am conscious. I can see you. I can express myself to you. Element of the soul, the vital activity of the soul is consciousness. What is the organ in our body that is spoken of as a window of the soul? What do you think? What? Eyes. The eyes are the window of the soul. And through the media of our eyes, we link to the soul of another person. The soul as life is seated in the heart. And, watch, duality again, this rational, spiritual consciousness is seated on the throne between the icons. Right here, the Ajna Center, pineal gland. That activated, that brought into vital activity, your pineal gland, it brings the soul into full functioning and activity. And that is the seat of all of the efforting, the work that we do in spiritual evolution, the metaphysical work that we do. The vital or etheric body is composed of ether. Your etheric body is substantial. That means it is energetic. It is a proto form of matter. It's not matter per se, because it's not yet been pushed down into the dense physical. So it is etheric. This etheric body acts as what? A conductor of prana. Prana is drawn into the breath. Prana comes from the solar bodies, both the sun, the various planetary bodies. So we draw this vibration through our breath into the lungs, pass it out through our body, and it's stored in this body. It is a body. It is processed then through the etheric body by thinking structuring the water in our physical body, and we now have the information transferred into dense matter. And now we have the means of communicating to ourselves. Prana is the life principle which energizes matter and produces form. The vital body embodies the sentient principle for the soul. In other words, the soul resides here in space because it is not material. The soul can communicate through our, to our body through the etheric body. Or the vital body is the expression and vehicle of the soul. And that is why we must study well these concepts. I now speak with extreme love and respect to the writings of Alice Bailey. I have studied now for since 1970 the writings of Alice Bailey and I have every volume that she has published dictated to her by Raj Kuhl, the Tibetan master. I'll give you a bit of humor. I was tough on DK. My first book that I was given was a treatise on cosmic fire. Those of you that are students of Alice Bailey know what I'm talking about. 
I couldn't read it for the love of money. I didn't know what he was talking about. All of these verbiage, language, hierarchies, statements, I tried to put it into logical framework. Watch. I couldn't do it. It is impossible. It's not meant to be thought of and read logically. Underline. I then said, I bought more books and became even more confused. Finally, I meditated one night and I said to DK, if you want me to use this information in any real way, give me some practical way that I can use it. I am fed up. I've had it to the top of my years, and if I don't get any form of help, I'm going to chuck the whole mass of these books and give them away. And that was my meditation. <laughs> Boy, did he take me to task. <laughs> when you lay it on the line with these masters and teachers, they don't fool around. I was taken out of body as I was going to sleep that night and brought to a valley in the Himalayas. I was deposited in front of a temple. I can still see these doors with extreme clarity. And as I approached the doors, suddenly my consciousness faded and I went to school. I awoke in the morning and I started to read. I learned how to read Alice Bailey. That went on for two years. One morning, a voice spoke again with me and, me and said, you've had enough, go out and teach. I said, thank you very much, I will. But I will teach you my words and not yours. He said, okay. I love him very much. I love him as a brother. I respect the integrity, the sincerity of his writing. I have found no fault in the logic, the thinking, and the way he has approached the teaching of occult and esoteric information. <clears throat> occult means hidden. Esoteric means the teaching of the spirit. These forces that you and I are talking about and are working with. What he has done is he demands you or I not read the writing, but experience. I have had to take passages from esoteric re healing and read it a hundred times. It's like a mantra. And I will speak it out loud. I will read it. I will read it. I will read it. And gradually the words start to fade and in place of the words comes a symbol. And I will write that symbol. Then I will come to another area and I will repeat this, comes another symbol and I start to put hieroglyphics together. Symbolic patterns. Exactly like the symbolisms that you see in Egypt or the Chinese spread. Because you've got to evolve from the words, the symbolic patterns, the earlier language, the universal language, that was the only the first step. Once I got that, then I looked for what is called coincidence. I take another passage that sounds the same, and what did I find? There was an additional nuance given in that passage. 
I read that and something more come in. He goes in and repeats again. There's an additional part him. He deliberately, willfully, gives you a bit here, here, and here. And if you don't go and search and find it that way, you're lost in the quagmire of the involved thinking that he imposes on you. You must think, my friends, in multi-dimensional reality. Not in three dimensions, not in four, but eight and twelve. Because you've got to construct, as you read, a octahedron, eight sided form, and you start to oscillate, and gradually the information links together, and you now have a concept. All disease, according to our DK, is the result of inhibited soul life. That is a fact. And once you inhibit the activity of the soul descending into matter, the body goes wild. It loses control and starts to act in an undisciplined way. But knowing how to Bring the soul in contact, loving it. Love is the glue of the universe. Love is that force that takes matter and gives it order, balance, integrity. Go on, keep talking about it. <laughs> ah. Here, I love this. Crazy little diary.
on the physical plane are such only as long as they are perceived through the senses of the human body. If we limit our observation to just the sense organs, we lead a life of illusion. When we open the intuition, our soul, we then see the intrinsic form that we then can fit patterns of observation of the senses to and complete our thinking. End of story. You hear what I'm saying? We, all of us, in the educational systems that have been imposed on us, have been brainwashed to destroy the intuitive faculties and as such we inhibit our soul. You see the seriousness of this? Do you? I mean, I've gone through a lifetime of training as a scientist. Without my spiritual training as well. I would have been a hardcore, rigid, conformist, material scientist. To break that egg, to take that concrete out and make it human, I've had to learn to lift my consciousness up and become a child. Not destroying any wit my integrity in technical and scientific work is expensive. But we must work with both faculties, without fear. But it is sad how we wipe out the intuitive faculties of our children. I gave and the Unified School did a four-year course on mind-boggling class to open these intuitive faculties. And it was wonderful. These young girls and boys would stand up in class and said, I woke last night and there was a person standing at the foot of my bed. What should I do? They tried to talk to their parent, their mother, their father. They said, you're only imagining this. Go to sleep. Forget about it. But that child saw an object at the foot of his bed. It was and is real. What should she do? So, in class we discussed it. And I said, the next time it appears, you speak to it. He said, what can I do to help you? Can we put this down?
look at what we do instead. We are only imagining it's not real. When you see with your mind's eye it is real, it is not imagination. It is a creation at times for teaching. When children go out into the woods and suddenly these little people appear, and they come running back and tell their mother and their father, oh, we see these little people. They aren't real. They are important because we do have the various kingdoms of nature. The Deva kingdom, the fairies, the gnomes, and the like. I experienced them with Rock Ogilvy in Finhorn. And we talked to these kingdoms together. I can speak from personal experience. I saw them now not as a form, but as vibration, as light. And that's what they are. They are light bodies. But as you they love us. In order for them to express themselves to us at times, they will draw the essence of our body into theirs and take on a form. So we can see them as a imaging of ourselves. But in truth, they are pure energy. But once you can release yourself from that, you can walk into these kingdoms in a loving, happy way without, again, fear. That is really what I've tried to share with you and to say, is to open up both hemispheres of your brain, to let your soul speak without fear, and to let that child emerge and counsel the activities that go on in each one of our lives. And when you do that, you have nothing to fear. You are what you are. I've done it. I've had to struggle at times, but I've never had fear. Because I know what I'm doing is for purpose and for reason. And this goes. I've said my piece. Now I'll go deeper. I will try again to go one step further in going step by step to everything that goes on when you do therapeutic use of a crystal. Would you like that? Yes. <laughs> I gave you yesterday a very important help that you can teach and train yourself by going in to physical forms and manipulations. Now, that is going through the crystal, but today we're going to talk about you. What goes on in you? What are the steps that you must go through to be of service, to help, and to serve your fellow man? Everything I gave you this morning is substantial to what we are going to do now. Number one, an A box. We must remove doubt. Uncertainty. Forget it. S C R T. 
P-A-I-N-T-Y. C-E-R-T-A-I-N-T-Y. Thank you. Good. <laughs> the first step is in yourself. This is the A the self. The ego. Removed out. Can I heal or not heal? Can I do I have fear? Am I uncertain of what I'm doing? So before you go into practice with any of this, you have done the preliminary yesterday of being certain of the practice that you've done it to the point you don't have to think about it anymore. In other words, you go in, you hold, you tune, amplify, link, and release. And you repeat this again and again till you've locked it into your mind you clearly understand that, but that's working to remove these technical pieces. Now we'll go into the left and right brain. Left brain, right brain. Activity. Right brain is logical. Left brain is intuitive. Right brain is ego. I. Isn't it the reverse? Oh, yeah. 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 All right, yeah. That is right. It's just reverse. That's an R. There you go. <laughs> well, I was so happy because I thought, well, that makes sense to me because usually it's reverse. No, no, no. Please, if you see something, I'm at the point now of fatigue. I will start to make mistakes. So if you see something corrected, I'm proud of you when you can do that for me. All right. Now, the point is this, that you want to open the door towards your intuition. You want to bring yourself to the point that you are not concerned about technology, about what you are to do. Is that clear? See what I'm right, working towards? Now, to do the removal of doubt, I usually, you if you have watched me carefully, you will see me suddenly draw my breath in. I'm holding then my breath at a certain peak level and putting it like onto a balance, a scale. I'm burning away doubt, fear, uncertainty with breath. Any question on that? And as soon as I feel my breath at a calm equilibrium state, I let my breath out slowly. And I listen to my breath. If there is uncertainty, there will, there will be a, a tone to the breath. There will be a voice in my breath that will tell me, ah, oh, I've got still a bit to do yet. So I take another breath. And I hold, and I just say balance, bring myself to a point of calmness, peace. And let my breath out. And then suddenly when I have the breath the way I want it, the body just drops down, and you hear no breath, it's just the silence of the at one minute. No longer a tone, it's just silence. So the key in balancing self is silence. Does that need? Oh? You've got to still that jangling pattern of thinking. And for a 
technical mind, it is a murderous job because you continually saying, what am, I, what am I to do now? Is this right or is this wrong? All of that has to be erased. You just read. And at times, the most wonderful way to create that silence is a bit of humor. What I've done, I've looked at a young lady or a woman, I said, you know, you're really beautiful. And you, oh, <laughs> what are you trying to do? Proposition me or, you know, something like that. But I'm recognizing the beauty I see in her. Now when you try it on a man, it becomes even more difficult. <laughs> but it is a recognition of a beauty in a person to create the sounds and I'm burning away this. That is the core. Once I have that feeling of balance and equilibrium, the next step Now I focus on the person that I'm working with. I say, do you want to be healed? your breath. 
breath in. And this pulse your breath that locks the program into the crystal. Now you're ready to go because you have it programmed with your feeling, your love. You have a program with the intention of that person to bring about that change which is right for them. I think it's, everything is clear up to now, isn't it? Now, when you go in... Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Uh, this morning we talked about programming the crystal uh, for one time and how you can do that. I don't follow you, I'm sorry. Yeah. What do you, we, we were some people talking about... Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Um, from the other course. All right. Yeah. Maybe you should tell us about the white light. Pardon me? It was about the white light to oh. uh, uh, program in and not to... Uh, Erase it. Yeah. Fine. You're dealing here with now Remember, let me go right back now what we have done with the crystal to treating a person. Is it clear the crystal? It's not clear. You can buy bias or you can limit that clearing to anything you want. Now if you've done meditation with the crystal and you've built up the love in your heart, you've built up a certain volume of energy in that. You can put in your mind and just say, I want to keep that and just erase the unneeded vibrations. And you will hold it. Mm. <clears throat> Come on, I, I, I think it's important that you <laughs> see this. This would be enough to, to make, make that uh, um, right. Well, I'll, be, I'll, I'll demonstrate this right now. Yeah. Well, you, I, I'm going to I'm going to show this to you because this is very important, and I think I want to clear all doubt on this. Why don't you come up and we'll do this today? Whatever. <coughs> Deal with your crystal. Now erase the crystal completely. Now hold it in your hand like this. Up, blue one. Up, like that. Just hold it. Now I will check it. Take it down a little bit lower. That's fine. Now I'm going to ask if there's any field in that crystal. What do you mean about field? Energy. If there's any, is, is the crystal devoid of any energetic field? I could pick this up if I had my omega-5. Now I'm going to use just the dowsing rods. See, I draw my breath in, and I let the breath out, and I start to balance. Now I'm ready. There's no feet. There's nothing. Now, charge the crystal. See the distance it is now? Now give it another charge. Okay. Why not yet? Just just charge it for the love. See if it's fully charged. I guess me. Here, 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 here
here and charge. Now take and put now, look at the crystal, put a program into that crystal, mantra or something that you want.
at individual numbers. So there was the individual characteristics of the energy in the physical body and the energy in the etheric body. When we finished, the numbers were all the same. We became one body and guess what the number was? 454. 454, both within the body and outside the body. I mean, that was a revelation, an absolute revelation. And I had three people measuring. In other words, two other people beside myself, and we got the same numbers, which meant that we were all linked into a common body. We had pictures of water. The water had the same value as the crystal. Thank you. If another person borrows your crystal, and it's an evil intention in it, and wants to, wants to start that program uh, with intention, what would happen? All right. What would happen? You'd hold it in your hand and you'd feel a vibration. Now what would you do to click it? Well, I'd fill it with, with light. Okay. What, it, what, is, what neutralizes evil intention? Love. <laughs> Love. Now, when you become reasonably sensitive, you do the normal charging like this, it would not stick. You get no stick. You get no feeling to it. I, I've had that happen because I've let the crystals here, people, everyone handles it. Suddenly I will pick up a crystal and it will be no feeling. It will be not even sticky. It will just be like a piece of glass. What do I do? I draw my breath in. Watch. And now I look at the program. I look at what was the intention put in here. I face it. I don't try to hide. Then I put a beam of light, of love, onto it, like that, and it's gone. That's all you have. Now, look, it immediately is sticking. Yes? You don't need to say you are putting out the camera program. You don't have to think on it. You just think about it in your crystal and clear everything. That's right. You can put a mantra, you can put different holy places you've been to, you can lock these things into your crystal as permanent as my facing the crystal in the form you see here. When we finish this crystal, the intention when my wife and I package this is that this crystal will do no harm. It will be for the service of mankind. And we have encountered that people, when they try to work with it improperly, it will, the tips will pop up. I've had many, many cases of pop tips. But, but <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Play with words. But to release. Any, there is nothing, my friends, nothing to fear about another person handling your crystal. Because what you have done here is personal. <coughs> it has a code that I cannot address or you cannot address. It is your code. It's just the same as you type into a computer a program and the address you take away. Now, nobody can get into it. It's there, but you can't get in. <laughs> uh, long time does that feel remain intact? I, I have had it for years, 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 years. And if you add an additional program, it will overlap. Oh, sure. That's it. Well, the practical experience 
sequence. Here is the curve I got. for the grouping of people that were at the conference. Now here's this 10 to the 1, 10 to the 5th, 14th, 5th, 10th, 15th, 20th, 25th, 30th, 35th. And it's 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th day. And here's the actual curve we got for a composite of 21 people. So each one of these points represent a composite measurement of 21 people. Look at the nature of that curve. It is accreting, it accretes, composite. And then you get then numbers which are truly astronomical. But the interesting thing is this was, this was very slow at first, and then suddenly the mother thing, the curve at this day was it just suddenly jumped up. It went from 10 to the 13th to 10 to the 33rd in one day's time. And we were high. I mean, a high that I've never experienced before. It was a wonderful sense of tranquility and peace. It does hold a charge. You can piggyback on the charge. Now, it depends. The stability of this, at this point, depends on your mind in maintaining that charge. Because this is a dynamic instrument. This is not a static instrument. This is a unique part of this tool. Tape <coughs> is static. Because once you record, it stays. It does not change in quality. This does. Watch. You're at this level. You have the crystal in your pocket, but you drop down and you suddenly get shocked or you get depressed. The whole charge will go just out and you will lose it. Now, you can, and I have done this repeatedly in the laboratory, put certain permanent programs in like this. And I will give it to another person. They will work with it have them erase it, and I've tried bulk erasers, just mechanical erasers. I will take everything out except this. And I can measure this with the Omega and then with the secondary equipment, and that's still there yet. I can lock in a program. Yes. Uh, in other words, what you were saying is that, for instance, if my level is high, my crystal will be a holographic picture exactly. of my level. Of right. energy. That is right. However, then my question is, if I want to use my crystal as a stabilizer of my level, can I program it, maybe put within it a per permanent program, mm -hmm. which will enable me to avoid the depth, the pits, the depth of a that slot in energy. That's why you go to this. I think. I think. There's a symbolism to do that stabilizing act. Uh -huh. I think. And the same in the in the small pyramid, <coughs> right? That's right. Good. Thank you. You follow me? I follow you. Put that on here. You transfer. The program you have from here to here. Then you can wear this. Now you can stabilize. Also because it has the basic, the, the ups and downs, the yin and the yang. It has the yin and the yang yeah. properly, symbolically, and physically put together to hold that energy. Mm -hmm. This is designed to be a dynamic 
instrument, which means it continually monitors the activity that is going on in you. But I can lock a particular vibration in here and hold it. So you see the, how these two fit together. I'm opening up a whole grouping of instruments like this. Yes, dear.
plan is open, you become a child again. Mm -hmm. yes. That is what it means, mm -hmm. is to open this plan to activity. But now I have two questions. Good. Um, the first one is, uh, when I'm not thinking of these persons, because it's impossible when you have no. a good deal. Uh, uh, do the program still work? <coughs> Please. What you can do, you have a blood sample. Yes. A person is, has deep depression, much unhappiness, let's say. You hold the crystal, visualize him, and put, I want, I pray, that this person can face their unhappiness and <coughs> release themselves from it. Pulse your breath and put it on the program now will continue to operate. But it does not violate their free will. Because, you see, the energy is there, but they can use it or not use it. And they are not depending on my source. Not a bit. Totally. You're free. Yes, yes. But uh, in our experience... <coughs> Am I, are you clear on that now? You see what I'm saying? Yes. But uh, but uh, if you program many people a day and uh, think very much of this man, uh, couldn't it empty your uh, inner soul in a way? I, I feel I've got a spinning headache. <laughs> when that happens, when that happens, you're letting your ego come in. Your feeling body. Your desire for these people to be well. The key thing we must practice, all of you here, you and myself, when we finish, we take a deep breath and we release. Loving detachment. When you can get that, there's no headache, there's no fatigue. Yeah, because... You see, you are a loving person, and you're a woman, you're a mother, and the moment you reach out and want that person to be well, you deplete your energy. It's, it's really so important to everybody who does healing. You help the person, but they must heal themselves. <coughs> When you deal with love, it's a universal force. It is a force that you cannot empty yourself. Because the more you give, the more you get. <laughs> but the moment you attach your mind, I want that person to be well. You're drawing your body energy. Mm. And the trouble is, you're reflecting your body as a electrode into that person. And that's why your energy goes down. And that is the value of the crystal. It is a protector, a shield. Thank you. I'm more than happy. That's why I came here. You see, I have seen I have seen throughout the world so many, many sick healers. They grow here in the stomach, they take on weight, the body becomes distorted, and the key is they want, they release and use their body energies from the solar plexus. When you deal with that, that is power, and not from here or here. Not my will, but thine. When I work with any one of you, I surrender. I give up my will. I do not try to heal you in any way, shape, or form. I am working for your good. You, my dear, when you're working with these 
poor people who have been tortured. The moment you opened your heart to them, you're dead, you're through. You can stand maybe one or two and then, then you have to go to bed. I learned this when I took care of both geriatric, and, which means old people, and mental patients. When I had to be locked up in a room with a mental patient, a manic depressive, for eight hours. If I opened my heart to him, I would end up a mental patient. But what I did, I could project love to them and be empathetic but not sympathetic. One of the remarkable keys which I did in a mental hospital, I would read the Bible to mental patients. And when I did that, they would quiet down and start listening. Manic depressives, violent people who were screaming, terribly violent. And as I quietly read the Bible to them, they would stop screaming, and suddenly they would move over and sit down next to me. And then they would listen, and suddenly they reach over and put their hand on my shoulder. I feel the contact of their body. They're literally crying inside, I need help, I need help, I want to get back into my body. Because these people have their etheric bodies separated, they can't control this etheric body. And through my voice, through the reading from St. John and other passages, these words start to draw them in. Then I stopped reading and turned around and gave them a hug. I said, now lie down. That was the treatment. Because mentally I couldn't touch them. Well, 11 o'clock. I think we take a break and then we come back. Yesterday, and I tell all of you now, 
your names engraved in a plaque that will be put in our laboratory and our work will be dedicated to you. So we will be sharing, even though we're in Denmark, here you are, I'm in California, we become one as not only friends but brothers. We do the thing that's what's important. important. That's right, because I came here with all the love of my heart and the best gift I could do is to bring my own wife because she has been really my mainstay in life. I could not be what I am without her. And I wish you all the good and thank you for this book and I'll read it and you'll feel many hugs coming from me. <laughs> Appreciate it. I started to talk, and now I'd like to give you another gift, a wonderful gift. I learned this in 1970, talking to plants. Letting plants teach you these wonderful plants that we have all around us, the language of nature. They're not words, because plants don't have words, but they are feelings. We don't have education to open our feeling body. Just think on it. For a moment now, we view your education from the first grade <clears throat> on through to the intermediate grades and into the high school and college. Where are you ever taught the training of your feeling body, your astral body, the processing of your senses? You're not. The only real output of training is always competition, not love. You look at sports. What is the object of sport? What is the purpose or intention of a sport? I must, I am competing against you. Therefore, I must be stronger than you, I must be more proficient than you. So therefore, in doing that, I put you down and I get stronger. <clears throat> I've had no desire for sports. People have tried to push me into sports. Because I'm a big person, they try to get me into football. I couldn't see any sense <laughs> in playing football. Why should I bang my head against another person to move a crazy little ball down the field. <laughs> and then we go push it over a goal line. Then we get back and we do it again and again. But for what purpose? What do we gain? What, how do we grow from that knowledge? How do we train our feeling body? What did I say before the break? The feeling body is the entry point for our soul. The soul takes the information of the senses, which are stored in the brain, processes it into a grouping of responses, and these are called sentics, S-E-N-T-I-C-S. The moment you think of love, your body will respond in a realistic way. It moves. When you think of anger, you notice my shoulders come in, there is a body language. But we're not trained on that. One of the teaching tools that I learned, and it came to me in a totally accidental, wonderful way, is when this young girl by the name of Debbie Sapp came to my home about 1971 
And she brought a plant with her. She had heard about my talking to plants and using them as a means of observing our mind in action. She had a boyfriend with her, and she had her pet plant. And we talked about that, and she said how much love she had for plants. And that there were male and female plants. I said, really? <laughs> and that some plants liked one another, and others they did not like to be next to each other. She said she found that out by taking two plants and putting them together. And if they like each other, the leaves will just grow and they will reach over and finally touch each other. They're, they're happy. They like to link. They're companion plants. And she found others that when you put them there, they just start to separate. They don't like each other. They want to get away <coughs> from each other. And lo and behold, when I looked into the bookstores, I found a book called Companion Plants. There's a book on the affinity of plants for each other. It was wonderful that way. But I said, Debbie, would you like to have a real experience? She said, what? I said, all right, watch. So I had a sit by side me and I took her plant. I said, now take a deep breath. Look at the plant and close your eyes, and when you are ready, release your breath and go into the stem of the plant. And I did the same myself, and we went on the most wonderful journey together. We could watch the dynamics of the plant, the movement of the fluid, we went into the roots, we went into the leaves, we went into the flowers. We spent a half hour being like two kids playing around together inside the plant. When she came out, it changed my life and it changed her life. Because when I opened my eyes, I looked at her boyfriend, there was he crying like a baby. He said, I was seeing the two of you so happy enjoying each other and having fun. And I tried to do it and I couldn't do a thing. He felt left out and disappointed. I said, well, you didn't try. He said, yes, I did, but nothing happened. So I said, come back the next week. He did. And then I started to have to train him to let go, learn how to be a child, which means not put this systematic blocks that we do, that you've got to do this, this, and this, and just let go and experience. Finally, he did. I have helped hundreds, thousands of people to learn to talk again to nature and let nature work with you. One of the most happy groups that I did this with was, above all, you can't imagine Findhorn. They had the Findhorn community. Then in this wonderful community of working with the Divic Kingdom, but none of the people ever went into a plant. They all sat back and let Dorothy McLean speak on her experiences with the Divic Kingdom. They had the tapes of uh, the other people with their experiences, but they, none of them, had any personal experience. So, with Dorothy McLean, the people from Fin the entire Finhorn community, I took the people into a, a geranium plant at that time. I have a tape of this, and I treasure it, of my taking the Finthorn into their plant and experiencing the Divic Kingdom for themselves. It changed every person's life because they experienced personally, instead of having to 
let someone else tell of their only experience. And that's what I want to do with you now. So here is this young lady who, where is she? Right here. I told her to pick out a plant <coughs> that would like to come and share itself with you. She said, this is good. So I said, fine, here we go. You know what's called the thing? What? No. You know, burning love. Burning love. <laughs> wow. <laughs> How appropriate. <laughs> when you want to communicate with a plant, you put your hands here on the pot, the flower pot, and it needs water, it says it's hungry. As soon as I feel here, I can feel a dryness. I can feel a coolness, a need. I'm, I'm already talking to the plant. You see what I mean? <coughs> My two hands like this. I'll feed it afterwards. I said, you've got to wait a moment. Because if I feed it now, then we will disconnect. Now what I'm doing, I'm waiting for a feedback from the plant. No more different than charging the crystal. I'm charging the plant. Body rotates, I just feel. So I mean, there's a change in my body now. If any of you can see aura, you will see a change in my aura. Did you see it? <coughs> Suddenly there's an integration now between the plant and myself. Now we're ready. <laughs> so people have neglected me. All righty, here we go. Look at the plant now. Breathe in. Close your eyes and visualize the plant. And now when you're ready, pulse your breath and come into the stem. Now I have joined you. Now let us get into one of the veins and go on a merry ride up the stem of the plant in the fluid part of the plant. <laughs> kind of difficult because there is not much water there now. Now we'll go into a leaf We'll crawl around inside one of these leaves. Look at the structure of this leaf, how water is bound, locked into the leaf itself. And now understand why these leaves are so thick that they hold the moisture for over long periods of time. Now let us go all together into a single cell in this leaf and watch now all of you the effect of love being given to this plant. Now crawl into this cell, sit back and relax, and watch all of the activity that goes on around you, like being in the Tivoli Gardens. It 
just as exciting. Now express your feeling towards a plant and watch what it says to you. effect now of the watering of the plant. You're going for a swim. Watch the activity now of that root, the tip of the root as I start to focus light on it, love. Here it comes. are all one. If we allow ourselves just to be children, the children of light. Move up the stem now and breathe in and out back into your body. Tell me what you experienced. Why? I don't know. What was the difficulty? Hmm? I don't have to be there. You didn't want to be there? Yes. All right. Did you get into the plant? Yes, I think so. All right, then what happened? Didn't you? 
Did you feel when I said love to the root? Yeah, it was light. It was right. Light. Right. So, what was more that you wanted to see? I wanted to see the leaves, but I couldn't get up there. Oh, oh, next time you try. Yeah. You get up there. Yeah. Use your crystal this next time. Okay, thank you. You see, she wanted to go one direction and she was pushed downward. <coughs> yes, dear? I think because the plant was dry, you didn't see, you know, those things. I know, because they were they moving. They were not moving, they, they were quiet. Moving. I know. Why did you go up? But you couldn't because there was no water to That's correct. Up. You see? Thank you, dear. That's very well said. Appreciate it. I had difficulty moving up myself. I had to push my way up. What experiences did you have?
see each plant he found had various symbolic forms. That is, this is a holly tree, and this is a form he saw. Yes, please, thank you. Holly tree, there is a form. So you may be seeing the symbolic form, geometric pattern of that plant. That may be very, very important. So you went more into the symbolism of that plant. So each, I, I just got a copy that Kurt had made from this man finding this book and making a copy. Now I have a copy and I'll be studying this. I'm so grateful to him and Kurt that I can take this back and put it to work now and study. Would anybody else like to speak? Yes, dear. When we go to the field, in the field, yes. and go, and we look at the last call, shining like a diamond. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was love. That's right. Do you notice every person's, and I've done this so many, many times, Every person has a unique experience. It's separate, it's individual. So you're seeing your experience, which is proper for you, not a telepathic imaging, or because I don't image when I do this. Otherwise, we're dealing with telepathy. And like you, you wanted to do one thing, and you got the opposite and you were disappointed for a moment. But you were given some very, very powerful insight. Reflect on that. And much teaching will come out tonight in your dreams and the next few days. This is not an, e not an idle experiment. It was meant for teaching, for unfolding. Anybody else like to comment? Did you experience something? Would you like to talk? Yes. That's right. This is a different plant. Yes. Structure. That's right. Networking all over the place. And those networks were like the threads in a balloon which held water. I could see that very precisely. The thickness, the dimensioning of this leaf is its protection. It conserves fluid, water right here. So it can live for long periods of time, physically, by having no water here. And it gives the plant more work to do if, if, if it doesn't get water enough. That's right. It can throw it out of balance. Yes. I was amazed that in the leaf I saw no green. I saw it was like being in a greenhouse with big windows of uh, Fluid or non-fluid. That is fluid. right. It's entirely different. We work, but there was no green color. No. Yeah, there's green here, but when we're in the light, compared to the geranium that we worked in the last workshop, it was green, green. It was brilliant. You remember. This time, no. It's like looking through a diffusion glass because these droplets of water are locked. Did you see it too, Kurt? Well, not precisely in that way. I was really surprised to see some insects. It, it, I, I couldn't understand it. I thought it was something which was made in my mind. <laughs> Go ahead. It was in the, the leaf, uh, there were just like uh, holes in, in the wall, and there were six <coughs> huge uh, flies with their heads and two those holes. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> my recommendation, Kurt, and to when you get these type of experiences, please do not reject them. No, I, I mean that sincerely. Yes? I saw all of us working in the leaf. You did? All of us working? Good. There's various types of work. Uh-huh. Cleaning and painting. <laughs> <laughs> you can have. What I've done, 
I've taken the third grade children, class, third grade. I sit in the center of a circle, I take a leaf like a plant like this, I take all the children into this experience, and they have an absolute ball. They love it. Because they get what you are speaking about here. They see themselves in, they start playing, and they let go, and they, we, we spent an hour together in total silence. Once you get in, yes, you want to try? Oh, yeah, go over I miss you, and I'm sure how oh, that plant actually behaves. Now, 
kind of field are you asking for? The etheric field. In other words, the vital force that is surrounding the field now. Now we take it, I'll take it down. There's none. Now, I will hold it here. Now take that other plant and bring it into approach. This one. Hold it. Move it. Move it further. There it comes. Now it's transferred. That's it. Oh, it's a good way to say it. the increment. Now, he's got it touching. Now I'll bring it in contact. Just leave it for a moment. Just like a transfusion. Now I take it away and we'll see. Isn't that easy? Yeah. 
simple? Uh, she can't even sleep anymore, this poor thing. <laughs> See how important these lessons are? Mm. Poor love, here is a wonderful living reservoir for pumping energy, your vital energy, into a form, a plant. You can give it to children. You can give it to people who are not well, older people. And your program, your thought forms will come out and vitalize the room and everything around it. Isn't that a nice way to finish today? What, what will happen if a patient gives you a class? <coughs> a patient? A, a sick patient. Oh. Can you reach uh, the patient? Oh, you have a perfect channel of communication. Yeah. Perfect. Because you work through the plant to the patient. I received a plan. That's what I meant. Yeah. No, no, please. I yeah. meant exactly yeah. that. Yeah. <clears throat> they open their heart and they give you in gratitude a plant. Now their heart is in that plant. Now you go into the plant to the patient. And now you, the plant is an intermediary as the crystal is an intermediary. I'm showing you a living means of communication instead of a crystal right now. Think on that for lunch and let's have lunch. It is 12.35. Is that good this morning?
See? Very, very slight. See the deviation? Can you see it there? You'd have to. Now watch here. It's a type, uh, See? That's a normal field. Is that clear? That is the plant's vitality. Now let us look at the difference. Check it with this. Feel in the water now. And it's growing. Look it. Yeah. Eh? Mm. I found when I chose this it will take sometimes up to one half hour. It will continue to grow and grow when I try to measure. Give you a chance. 
Who feels a little tired? <laughs> yeah. Yeah.
just fill it in because it can be diluted almost indefinitely. Now, you didn't get the no, we didn't get it. Let them what? have it. Hold the crystal in your hand. Breathe in and breathe out. Now each one of you as you breathe in go into your crystal with the outgoing breath. Enter your crystal with the outgoing breath. Now, focus on this crystal with yours. Breathe in and direct the energies to the crystal in my hand and pulse your breath. information, the knowledge that is contained within me back to each one of you. Peace be to you. Now, bring a ring of white light with your mind around the crystal and with that white light you secure that information so that it will be there for you to use whenever you wish it to be. Breathe in and out slowly. Breathe in and send love into the crystal and out. That's a beautiful note that is being sounded. A lovely note. Now, please, summarize what I have said to you in words from the time we have started here in Denmark to now. put together the teaching necessary for you to apply in how you are to work with the crystals in your practice. Now move ahead one year from now. Let your breath out and see what you will be doing one year from now with crystal. Bring in your teachers, the guides that are assigned to you to work with, counsel with them to lay the ground <coughs> one 
year from now, so that when you start now, you can fulfill the work you are to do. When we finish, and sometime this weekend, take the crystal in your hand, breathe in and out and start writing the program that has been given to you now. The way you are to use the program the activities that you are here to work with precisely. Peace be to you, and may we all go in light. Breathe in, and out. could see ahead one year. Could you? Yeah. I could see and immense joy mm -hmm. and bliss. Tremendous return, my dear. You will be so, was so happy. Joy and bliss and because what greater joy can we have on this earth plane than to serve our fellow man, to help another person to fulfill themselves? I don't know any better. No. I really don't. You feel the atmosphere now? You feel quiet? Now, my friend, could you come forward? You. Now, as you are in the crystal, raise your level of consciousness up till you can contact the masters. And I would like, if it is proper, for us to contact Master D.K and see if he would be willing to speak to you for the good of the group that is here at this time.
speak through him. Yes? Is there any words more that need to be given to this group? You are that. Am I what? You are light. All of you. You tried, my friend, when you were in body to form a group of world service. We are building these at this time now. And I am trying my best to carry on the teaching that you started when you were here on this earth plane. Is the information sufficient for these people to carry on with what was given to them these days? When they understand with their heart, 